What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Friend of the channel, Bamboo Lab, is having your second anniversary sale, which means a ton of you guys are going to be getting 3D printers soon. Now, I've had the Bamboo X1 Carbon for just about a year now. It's got, uh, I think, 850 hours on it. So I figured, what better time than now to give you a little bit of a one-year recap? Now, I am partnered with Bamboo as a key opinion leader. However, it's not going to affect anything I'm talking about in this video. Now, they don't pay me. However, once in a while, they send me cool stuff like these. These are the Bamboo Lab 3D effect sheets. They're only okay. Now these 3D style effect sheets have been around for over a year now, and this is actually one that I grabbed from AliExpress. One of the cool things about these is not only does it have the effect on it, but it also has the gold textured PEI plate on the back. Now I am a sucker for the gold textured PEI plate. Honestly, it's my favorite one so far. I do believe that Bamboo's gold textured PEI plate is better than the Alley ones, however, that's a whole nother story. My main problem with the Bamboo 3D effect sheets is the fact that they're stickers. You actually have to adhere this yourself to a build plate. Now the reason why that kind of sucks is that if you don't do it exactly perfectly the first time, you're not going to get that super nice glass type finish that you get from the Alley plates. Now the reason why you want a super flat glass like surface is to make something really clear like this. You can see on this cheap yellow display case, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It's super, super clear. And if I get reflection on it, you can see this is extremely, extremely flat. Now that was printed on, I think an $8 AliExpress plate, but it's gorgeous. It looks perfect. Now let's check out something that was made with the bamboo sheets. Yeah, you can see if the light hits it just right like that, you can see how not perfectly flat that actually is. And I spent a lot of time making sure that the sticker adhered as well as possible. I've even heard reports from people saying that the plates will actually develop bubbles after going through a certain number of heat cycles. So that's definitely not a good thing. Now I had a much better experience with the carbon fiber plate. That one went on really nicely and actually looks great. Check it out. This is ZR Kraken's case for the Hack RF. This looks amazing with the carbon fiber on it. Even the buttons and the knob, this thing looks fantastic. Now, if you do want to try the stickers yourself, make sure you print the little jig. Well, I guess it goes this way. The little jig for it. This thing helps out a ton. Now, it clamps onto your plate and the sticker right here so that you can kind of peel the backing off and put it on really, really nice and smoothly. I wouldn't even bother with the sticker sheets, honestly, if you're not going to use the jig because it's just going to come out like crap. Another tricky thing was actually printing the thumb screws for the jig was surprisingly difficult. I think I printed like five of these guys before they stopped falling off the build plate. There's no brims on them on the standard profile, so they don't have very good adhesion. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're using them. I even used Bamboo Labs Cosmic PLA, which honestly, this stuff is fantastic. It's got this like really, really fine sparkle, like glitter to it. It looks really good and it prints so, so well. Now it's probably my favorite filament right now, at least my favorite PLA. It's gorgeous. I love that glitter. I love the color. What's also really cool about it is that it actually prints kind of like PLA CF. So when you print things like supports, it comes off really nice and clean. The only one thing I mentioned is that anytime you're using any sort of filament with a sparkle to it or glitter, definitely don't run it through the 0.2 nozzle. You don't want to have to do a cold pull to get a rogue piece of glitter out of that thing. So yeah, as I said before, I've had my Bamboo X1 Carbon for about a year now, and I've got 850 hours on it. And I've got to say, I've had pretty much no problems with this printer. And honestly, since I've got it, I've pretty much completely neglected it. Aside from putting some stickers on and in it, I've done pretty much no maintenance. It's time to grease my lead screws. Yeah, you're fine. Just keep on trucking. I did actually finally get around to vacuuming some of the Scooby snacks out from underneath the print bed. But aside from that, I really haven't done anything. I did refocus my camera slightly, which is kind of cool. All you really have to do is take the camera out and there's a actual lens on it. You can tighten or loosen, change the focal length, and it looked a lot better after I did that. Now, that being said, I definitely should do some maintenance on it. So maybe tomorrow I'll go clean the lead screws, give them some grease. But again, I haven't done anything and this thing still prints as good as day one. Any problems that I've actually had on this printer have been more or less my own fault or the fault of the filament that I'm using. You see, I've definitely jammed and heat crept this printer a few times. In the quest to perfect my transparent PETG, I definitely made a print that will 100% of the time crash your printer. It's a little bit too hot and a little bit too slow, and it basically forces your printer to heat creep. Now, if you don't know what heat creep is, basically it means you're overheating the nozzle of your printer, and it's allowing the filament to get too hot above the heat break, and that basically clogs the whole thing up. I've also had the extruder jam a few times, but again, this is because the filament that I was using pretty much broke inside it. But even that wasn't too big a deal. Just a couple screws to take the extruder out and then you can kind of pop it apart into different pieces, unclog it. It's really pretty easy. 
But yeah, in general, this printer has been nothing but super reliable and really easy to use. Keep your print bed clean. I use Windex. They also recommend using just Dawn dish soap and water, but keep your plates really clean. Adhesion will be great. Everything's gonna work out just fine. Now, one upgrade I might recommend doing right off the rip would be the gold PEI plate. This is absolutely my favorite plate to print on. It's super reliable. It has a cool texture to it and things pop right off as soon as they're cool. What's actually really cool too is that the new Bamboo X1s look like they're phasing out the cool plate going over to the gold plate. So if you get a brand new one, you might get a gold plate with it, which is good because the cool plate is stupid. Changed my mind. The cool plate's really only suitable for printing in PLA and they recommend using the glue stick on it. And I absolutely despise the glue stick. Seriously, never use it. It's awful. Trash. Throw it out. You don't need it. Like, yes, I'd love to make a huge mess on my print bed and make my first layer look like crap. Now, if there are any of you out there that actually really like the cool plate or have a great application for it, please leave it down in the comments because I can't figure out why anyone would want this thing. Literally, you can use the smooth PEI plate instead of the cool plate. You can even use the same settings on it and it's going to work. So why cool plate? In fact, I've even gone as far as to disable the automatic plate detection because if you don't have the cool plate, you don't need it. If you look at most of your print profiles, it's actually all the same temperatures for your filaments on every plate except the cool plate. So if you're not using the cool plate, you don't need to know what bed you're on. Chances are I'm going to just peel off the cool plate and put another one of the 3D effect stickers on that one. Aside from that, honestly, probably the only other accessory I might recommend with the X1 Carbon would be a 0.2 nozzle. The 0.2 nozzle makes you able to print some really, really fine detail. Now, don't mind the bad black outline on the top part, but check out where it says Motorola Advisor. With a 0.4, there's no way you would see anything of that word advisor underneath there. With the 0.2, you can actually kind of read it. It's so cool. Now, I don't use my 0.2 nozzle all the time because it dramatically increases the amount of time it takes to print things, especially with multicolor prints. That hacker's pager, I'm pretty sure took like eight hours with color changes, and it only had color changes on the last like 20 layers. Now, nozzle changes aren't super hard with the X1. They're even easier with the A1 system because they've got hot swappable nozzles on there, but with the A1, it's only a couple of screws it's not that hard. Honestly, the biggest problem people have are unplugging the cables. There's a little cable, the bottom one, that you actually have to do a little clip to pull it out. And I've seen people before, AWOK, I'm looking at you, I've seen them actually pull the entire terminal off the circuit board. Luckily, they only retail for like 11 bucks and they're super easy to replace. AWOK even filed a claim in support and they sent him one for free. Bamboo's actually been absolutely fantastic with pretty much everybody I personally know when it comes to support tickets. Like Amelia's camera got kind of wonky. I think it turned all like purple or red after after printing with ABS in high temperature, they sent a brand new camera, no questions asked, and I swear it's a better camera than what was in there before. But either way, if you have any problems with your printer, just reach out to support and they'll help you out. Now, if there was one thing I was gonna complain about as far as the X1 goes, or the P1, because they have the same system, is the poop shoot. Now, the design's not bad, but everybody has problems with poop occasionally getting flung onto the print bed itself, or the poop chute getting backed up. Now I have a pretty large poop container, but even this thing will get full. And if it does, basically the printer is going to stop because it's going to back up. And with color changes on the 0.2 nozzle, it tends to get clogged, not even clogged, it gets stuck a lot because the 0.2 poops aren't heavy enough to actually go down the poop chute. Honestly, I'm kind of nitpicking here, but if I was going to complain about one thing, that would be the thing to complain about. So that brings me to the AMS. Now the AMS is actually a surprisingly technical piece of equipment. If you use bamboo filament, the AMS AMS itself will actually read an NFC tag that's on the roll and then tell the printer and Bamboo Studio exactly what it is and how to print with it. It also tells you how much filament's actually on the roll, which I find to be extremely useful. Speaking of, does anybody actually know exactly how the fuel gauge on the AMS works? Because I honestly don't know. I can't tell if it's like some sort of cloud thing where it reads the UID off of the NFC chip that's on there, stores it in the cloud, and every time you print with it, it just takes away some of the filament from the roll? Or is it somehow by weight? Wait, is there a weight sensor inside the printer? I have no clue. If you know how it works, leave a comment down below. I'd love to know. Now for such a complex little machine and how much multicolor printing I do, I've had very few issues with the AMS. Honestly, I think the only real problem I've had with the AMS has been printing transparent PLA. Now, I love transparent PLA. I've been printing on my Hatchbox transparent PLA for a long time, and it's really one of my favorites. Actually, AWOK over at AWOK Dynamics is the one that introduced me to the Hatchbox filaments, and he's using it all the time as well. But the problem is, inside the AMS, that transparent PLA is extremely temperamental. As we all know, PLA is hygroscopic, which means that it absorbs moisture from the air. Well, when PLA absorbs moisture, one of two things happens. If it's transparent filament, it gets less transparent. 
also becomes very, very snappy. This is especially the case with Hatchbox Transparent PLA. The PLA gets so brittle so quick that it will love to break inside your AMS. If you have a failed print with transparent PLA and you don't ask the printer to unload the filament, it's almost guaranteed to break inside the printer. Fingers crossed it doesn't break inside the extruder because then you're gonna have to take that part apart as well. I've actually found it best practice to just pull the filament out of the AMS itself. You can leave the spool in there, but just make sure it's completely unloaded from the AMS and then it's less likely to give you any problems in the future. But yeah, I've had it break inside the AMS a bunch of times. It's really not that hard to fix. All you gotta do is you can pull all your spools out. There's a couple screws you gotta take out and then you find the Bowden tube where the filament's in, pop it out, clear it out, no big deal. Now I do feel like there should be an easier way to clear a clog from the AMS. Like maybe tell it which slot to unload and then push the filament out through it. Just disconnect one of the Bowdens in the back and then you could theoretically just tell it to load one of the slots and that'll push the broken filament out. I mean, maybe you can do this. If you know any way of doing this, please let me know in the comments down below. But other than that, I really haven't had any problems whatsoever with the AMS. Now, I have noticed, because I've been watching a lot of bamboo videos, that some people are actually having a lot of problems with the AMS. However, there's one thing that I've noticed on almost every single video that somebody says they have problems with the AMS. They all have one thing in common. It seems like they're all using cardboard spools. And most of them are even using cardboard spools, just raw dog right in there without any rings or anything like that, just straight up in the front. Now, yeah, I know you can use the cardboard spools in the AMS, but from what I've seen, it seems to lead to nothing but problems. You can print rings that go on the outside of the spool to try to help reduce some of the nastiness that it does to the rollers, but still, that cardboard dust inside there is going to get everywhere. Plus, when you get to the end of a roll of filament, they tend to be too light, and then the uh, AMS actually starts to pull on those rolls, and they unseat, and they hit the top, and it's just bad news all around. Now, it's the cardboard dust that I'm pretty sure is causing all sorts of problems for people. Most of the people that were complaining about the AMS, complaining about problems with them, were that the feeders were getting broken and cardboard dust getting inside there is not going to help the situation. Now, I know a lot of companies have moved over to cardboard spools for sustainability and for the environment, but I'm honestly still, I'm probably never going to put a cardboard spool in my AMS. You can either re-spool something onto a plastic spool, which is, I know, a pain in the ass, or you can actually cut off the cardboard and actually use a bamboo spool, and that works pretty well too. I actually wish a lot of companies went in the direction of bamboo and just sold refills for their spools. Bamboo spools come apart in two parts and you can just pop a new bunch of filament on it and rock and roll ready to go. It'll even save you like three bucks, so that's pretty cool. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video where I go over the entire bamboo slicer and some really, really cool features in there, definitely check that video out. There's a couple really good hidden gems in that video, including uh, importing custom fonts and changing which filament prints in which order, which actually is easy to do, but nobody ever really explains how to do it. But long story short, my Bamboo Lab printer has been a complete paradigm shift from my Ender 3. The speed and precision of this thing allows me to iterate over and over again. In one night, I can print five versions of something until I get it exactly perfect and exactly the way I want it. That's especially the case with my super high detail first layer things. Like check this guy out, ridiculously high level of detail on this thing, all from the first layer. I printed dozens of these things. Like I printed so many of them, I think I shipped AWOC like 10 or 15 of them just to give away to people. But because of the AMS and the speed of that printer, I could pretty much figure out if my first layer was gonna be usable within like 20 minutes of actually starting the print. So I could get home from work from my real job and spend the rest of the night printing like five or six or seven tries just to get that one perfect one. It's also been really fun watching the mess with the firmware for this thing over the past year. When I first got this thing, it was pretty loud. And most of us coming from Enders, we had gotten those pretty silent, but seeing how fast this thing actually printed, we were speculating that it probably was about as quiet as it could be because this thing's going like Mach 30. It can't be that quiet. We were wrong. It's gotten very, very quiet since then. Honestly, when this thing's running, most of what you hear is the chamber fan. The AMS is a bit noisy, but again, I can live with that. Now, I know some people like to complain about the fact that it is a closed source printer. It's not open source. But then again, so is Apple, and that's not stopping anybody from buying iPhones and MacBooks. Also, they're being extremely fair with the pricing of replacement parts. The replacements part store is very, very affordable. Like almost any part you're normally gonna replace on this printer is less than 40 bucks. So unless you break the screen or maybe the entire heat bed, 
it's not going to be that expensive to fix this printer. Bamboo keeps things closed source to make sure that they have control over how their printer works. So because they've got such good control over the firmware on their printers, they don't have to worry as much when it comes to service and warranty. Now that being said, there is actually custom firmware for the printer you can get. Now it does technically void the warranty for obvious reasons. So, you know, you can take it or leave it. But again, their support and their warranty is so good that I'm totally fine with them being closed source. Now I know a ton of you guys have been getting printers with the sale. So I kind of want to make a video just talking about my experience with my printer. And honestly, it's one of the best things I've ever had. It's such an amazing machine. Being able to print something quickly that looks great in multiple colors is just completely mind-blowing to somebody who's never done it before. So if you're thinking about grabbing one, I can definitely recommend any of Bamboo's products. They're great. The support's great. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I just, I could talk about my printer all day long. That's actually what I do in Discord half the time. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.